Hey there, Melissa here at Safe Haven Ministries, and we're about to have a third Bible study. And, you know, we've been talking about Psalms 1. And the thing that I remember, you know, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it because God has something for you this day. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask, Father, that you just give us wisdom to hear what the Spirit has to say and then apply it to our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when we ended, I was talking about meditating on the Word and, and getting it inside of you because the Word of God is in layers. It's in layers. Have you ever eaten baklava? Oh, I love that stuff. But it has layer after layer after layer of, of really light pastry. And so the, the Bible is the same way. You can look at this Word and you can read it for a year. And you can read the same passage over and over again. It means same thing, same thing. And then one day, all of a sudden, it's like God does an apocalypse. That means to reveal, to pull back something that was already there and reveal it to you. That's actually what the word revelation means in the book of Revelations. So it's just, a, it's showing you something that's always been there. And so, I'll give you an example. In, in uh, Matthew 6.33, I believe it is, 6.3, it says, But when you give to the needy, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Well, that makes sense to us. We know what that means. Just don't be telling everybody. And that's true, but there's more. As I was sitting on a stage uh, waiting for the pastor to announce me, uh, to introduce me, I I was thinking to myself, Lord, that person that asked me last week for money and the week before is asking me for money again, and I feel bad not giving it to them because I've got the money to give them, but I just don't know what to do, Lord, and I'm kind of finding myself in a mess here. And the Lord reminded me of that verse, and I thought, okay, if I give to the needy, don't let my right hand know what my left hand's doing. What's that got to do with this, Lord? And the Lord spoke so clearly into my spirit. And basically what he said was, Melissa, you give to him and he knows it. And so whenever he needs more, he comes back to you. Instead of letting me be his source, you're jumping in and you're taking care of him. Now, if I nudged you and told you to give that money, that's different and then I've got a directive from the Lord. But sometimes we just hand things out and we really do it because of a compassionate heart or we feel like we need to do that when all the time God's trying to do a work in their life and so and get them to trust him. So just know that that there's layer after layer in God's word. And I I want to go down to uh We've been talking about Psalms 1, and basically what this whole chapter really involves is be careful who you listen to, the voice that you're hearing. And we're going to talk about voices, I think, next, but, but it's all about we've got to learn to hear the right voice because the wrong voice that you're listening to, the voice of the world, they'll, they'll, it'll kill your dreams. You know, the Bible says that, uh, that words have the power of life and death. Spoken words have that much power. We don't even think about that. But there are people who can kill your dreams in a heartbeat. There are people can, that can make you feel low down and like a dog in a heartbeat. There are people who can get you to believe that right is wrong and wrong's right. Because when you hang with people who continually pour into you the wrong thing, God doesn't have a chance to pour the right thing. And so... We're going to be in verse 3 today, and it says, If you do the things listed above, then it says, You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in your season. Your leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. Well, I like that verse right there. Do you know there's another verse in the Bible that's almost identical to it? It's found in Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, and it says this, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding 
fruit. Verses in the Bible, you'd never want to take a verse out of context and think that's the answer. You look to find other verses that will back you up and make sure it's the right thing. Uh, I love, when I read that, the first thing I thought of was Joshua 1.8. And this is a, a verse that I go back to a lot, but it said, keep the book. He's talking to Joshua. He says, Joshua, keep this book of the law, in other words, the word of God, in your mouth, on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so you may be careful to do everything that's written in it, and then you will be prosperous and successful. That's just backing up what we just read. Now, in Jeremiah 17, one of the things that says is that Jesus is the fountain of living water. I love that. If you can picture yourself sitting by the river and you've got your toes in the water and it's just, uh, you're just getting, oh, you're just getting it all over you and it's splashing up and it's wonderful. Well, let me tell you, when you get in the word of God, you're just cleansing yourself. And the Bible says you're filling yourself with living water. Jesus is the word. The Bible tells us that in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. And we know that Jesus is the word. And so as you get all this in you, what's going to happen is out of your belly shall pour rivers of living water. In other words, what's in you is going to come out of you. And, and that's why when we had, that's what we call fruit, fruit. Well, fruit is something that I don't think we really, I firmly believe we don't know the impact our words have. We know that we can bless people with our words. We know that, you know, maybe we pray for somebody out loud. We talk with them and pray with them. Or maybe you uh, are encouraging them one day or you are giving finances to them. But whatever it is, and God will show you how to do that, whatever it is, you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has a plan and he's using what little thing you do to have major impact. We can't know that down here because we'd be so full of pride that we couldn't get our head through the door. Amen. Maybe that's you, not me. I mean, surely I wouldn't do that. Of course I would. We all would. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is... Uh, you may not know the impact. You may know that you've done things, but you may not know the impact that you've had. It's important to know you're having impact. But um, in the scripture, it says, uh, it goes on to say that we will have, well, let me see where it is. It, you will be successful in everything you do if you follow these words of God. Well, that sounds great, but we're looking at our life sometime and thinking, I, I don't know if I'm prosperous or not. It's not looking too good right here. Let me tell you, you are being prosperous and you are being fruitful as long as you're con continually getting word inside of you. You're going to be amazed. I'm telling you, you can do mighty things in the kingdom. God has his hand on you. You are going to do things that you will not believe in the days and the months ahead. So get ready, get ready, get ready, because prosperous means that God's working in your life. Even if you can't see it, God's working in your life. It's just like Joseph. He was in prison, but the Bible says, and God gave him grace, and God favored Joseph all the way through. You watch what happened. And the end of that story is he went from the prison to the palace. How many of you want to be in the palace? Well, I do. I want everything God's got for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless these people right now. In Jesus' precious name, we ask these things. Amen and amen. See you tomorrow.